Hey guys, it's Big G, and today I wanted to tell you guys how to appraise a work of fine art or anything in general of value that you think is sitting around your house, you inherited it, or you think is really cool. I'm going to show you how to evaluate the worth of it, its um, financial worth, and it's just worth aesthetically so you can understand the systems of value and how you can appraise art for yourself whether you want to buy, sell, or just know what you have in your house or wherever. So uh, let's break this down and let me appraise my artwork of Red Groom's The Subway Riders. All right, so the first thing that you kind of want to do when you appraise an artwork or anything like a collectible is the readily apparent identity. So what does this mean? Basically, what are you looking at? Like what stands out to you? So if you guys don't know what who Red Grooms is, this is a Red Grooms subway print from 1983. And if you're from New York, like I am, you could tell that this is an iconic, kind of pop kitschy image print of a New York City subway scene from the early 1980s. So what stands out to, what's kind of, what's the calling card of this, this image and composition? Well, you have all the different diverse characters here. You have a man with his glasses on, very typical New York. You have the pole. You have the newspaper, the elderly woman here, the random characters, and it's kind of like a caricature. And it's very funny, and it's pop, and it's just very iconic. So the first thing is you want to kind of identify what this image is, like what is it about, its meaning, how iconic it is, and what stands out. All right, so the second thing is you want to ID the kind of apparent things if there's markings or signatures on the artwork or the piece in general that you're looking at. So this is from 1983, and we can tell this is from Red Grooms. He has a signature here. You can look at his characteristics, signatures and the loops in his name, 1983 from the date of the um, screen print. And now if we scroll over to the left, usually on prints, you'll see the edition number. So this is an edition, this is an edition of an original of 99 out of 250 that was made in circulation from 1983. And that's gonna affect the value. So this is a screen print of an original gauche um, composition by the artist of the Subway Riders. And this is an additional copy that was created by the artist at the Marble Gallery in the 1980s. So you want to look at that. See, if it's not the original, it will affect the value a little bit. So you can't just say, oh, this is like, this is five or six thousand dollars. Maybe if it's an original, in this case, um, the original, originals have been selling for around ten thousand six to ten thousand dollars but this is affected this is not an original so we will decrease the value of this which i'll show you in the calculation moving forward here so you want to look at the identifications and the obvious things and marks that stand out about the work all right so number three here in general a very good thing to kind of anticipate and value your work or artwork is to understand the biography of the artist who is this artist do they have street cred are they just starting out are they a major artist? So in this case, um, Red Grooms is a very, very well-known artist in the pop art genre, akin to Andy Warhol, Hans Hoffman, a lot of Jasper Johns types. He's very, very well-known in the contemporary world, but he's not, he's not appreciated as much like an Andy Warhol or other pop artist. But nonetheless, he's been around a very popular artist. He has works that have sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars of originals. And he's very well known. He's having a lot of discovery and anniversaries in the Marlboro Gallery and a lot of high-end sales for his artwork. But he's not an Andy Warhol yet. But the artist has significant contributions to pop art. He apprenticed, apprenticed with Hans Hoffman, a very famous contemporary artist, um, has met and worked with a lot of contemporary artists here in New York. And he's very famous for his pop themes of iconic images of Americana, subway riders, and a lot of sculptures and mixed medium. So you kind of see this in itself, in the artwork itself, that it's very pop themed. And this is his genre. And this is the biography of the artist. So it's very important to know who the artist is and if they have a lot of credit and street cred to their name. So another thing on this list is very obvious, you may know this already, is the condition of the artwork or piece that you're looking at to appraise. So in this case, the image seems like it's in very, pretty much very good shape. It's not perfect shape, but it's very good. So this is very good for sales comparisons that you want to compare with other works. So you want to kind of look 
especially in screen prints, you want to kind of look on the edge. See, there's a little teeny warping here, which means it's not perfect. But if you look on the general composition here, everything's pretty good. The integrity is very well framed. The frame is very important. Um, there's not a lot of dust and you know deterioration. There's not like little bugs eating at it. It's, it's in a very good temperature controlled environment. In my apartment, it's very good. So the condition is very key. You can't just sell a, for example, cars. You can't just sell up an old beat up Porsche and expect to get the same amount compared to how it's appreciated on the market now. Okay, that makes the same thing with art here, of, of valuable items. You can't just get a beat up item and say, oh, you know, it's Porsche, the logo, or Gucci, it's the same amount. No, -uh, no, it has to be in good condition. You gotta evaluate and be objective with that. And if you wanna do that, you can call in some, like a, an appraisal specialist or restorationist who can give you the no BS answer at how good shape of the item is in. So another important thing when determining value, of course, we talked about aesthetics and the physical image of it. It's a screen print, you know, it has a certain size, it's, you know, it's from the artist and this genre, it's a collage, screen print, etc. But the next thing on the list is we want to talk about market value. So what do I mean with market value? You want to look at the sales comparison. So whenever I do appraisals, you want to look at the comparisons of what is, if this is selling, how much of it is selling, and what's the recent sales in the last three years? Usually three years is a good indicator in value of the item based on supply and demand. If it's getting a lot of volume, people are selling it, a lot of turnover. So in this case, I looked into the research several times, and this item for the addition of like out of 250 is selling around 2,000 to 4,000, the upper scale, usually around 2,000 or 3,000, giving a margin of error you know, around $1,000, $2,000. But I looked on Christie's websites, Artsy, and a lot of art auction-based websites, and a lot of this has been selling for the last three years for around like $2,000. So this is based on the addition, obviously, in the market value. So like, what are people, do they want to buy this artist? Um, how much are they paying for it? This is all quantifiable data that you can quantify and compare. So you always want to compare and have a few examples down you know, on your balance sheet or just, you know, on your notes to see, compare and then divide the mean of what it's selling for and then you'll have a good picture. And obviously you want sales from the last three years, so you can't be from like 10 years ago and expect the same value because of inflation, market value changes, and just the credentials of artists and popularity change, which is very important when you're selling. So appraisals is a very difficult field. It's very difficult for, for me to even to assign a true value as an ISA International Association appraiser. It's really hard to, you wanna be completely objective here. It's not, you can't 100% assign a value, but in this case, we have a lot of good mix in this artwork. We have good conditions, a very popular artist. It has had recent sales for a good amount, which gives us a good average. And the artist, the biography, he's appreciating value. He's a little bit older of a gentleman. He's had a lot of contribution to popular art. And I see this work maintaining its value, if not gaining more value over time because of the popularity and scholastic interest in his contributions to pop, pop art with the likes of Andy Warhol. So always remember these lists. You wanna kind of evaluate the physical characteristics and the market value to appraise. You can't just make up numbers and say, oh, is this worth, because I saw this random post on eBay of somebody asking for $20,000, it's not how it works. You want to be objective and you want to kind of be clear and look at you know evidence at hand like a detective to kind of evaluate and appraise your items so hopefully you use these things well if you have an artwork if you're lucky enough to me have an artwork or if you just have some random stuff in your closet like clothes or anything you want to appraise you can use these principles whether it's for little items real estate or any of these things you can do it for yourself hopefully you go forth and uh, appraise your own items good luck if you want to know more, please subscribe to my channel, Big G, and you know, hit me up for a private art appraisal. I'd love to help you out whether I'm in person or online. So hopefully uh, you can appraise your art, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.